Hey guys, thanks for stopping on a Pete's Garage. You know, before I get started, I want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel, who watches my videos, and those of you who have kept me on your radar uh, because we, we've had some great success here. I, I read a lot of the conversations that you guys have with each other, and it's fantastic. And that's what I want this to be. I want it to be a community where we all can share what we know. I share what I know, but I don't know everything. I know a lot, but I don't know everything, and I'm always willing to learn. And you guys have given me some awesome ideas, some awesome tips. We shared some great stuff, and I appreciate it. Please keep doing that. And the text messages and the uh, phone calls I get, it, it's all great. Let's keep up all that great work. We're, we're really doing a great job, and I, and I love everything you're doing, and I appreciate it. So thank you very, very, very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to take a break from the engine building stuff for a minute because... Um, uh, well, number one, it's the middle of winter here in Buffalo, New York. We've got tons of snow. It's been minus zero degrees. Zero degrees been below for the last three or four weeks. Uh, and uh, as we're going to have that for another three or four. And I've got a bunch of uh, small accidents to fix. Uh, ripped off mirrors, smashed in bumpers, bumper covers, uh, a lot of things like that. And you might have that problem and you might have to do that yourself. So I, what I'd like to do in this video, and I've done other videos about painting parts and installing parts. But this video in particular, I would like to give you some painting tips. Things to watch as you go along through your painting process that are little tricks that you wouldn't learn unless you've been painting for a while. Now I've been painting cars for over 30 years. Thousands of cars. Cars, trucks, all kinds of stuff. I painted semis, buses, trailers, uh, all, you name it, I painted up to special army equipment, uh, radar, radar units, some cool stuff. I haven't painted for a long time and I've seen it all. I've used paints, used paints all the way from way back when we used lacquers, the acrylic enamels when Imran became popular, all the way up through base coat, clear coats, and into our waterborne systems that we have now which are incredible. Paint, paint technology has is, is, is gone uh, way off the charts and it's way easier now than it used to be a long time ago. But there are still some tips and tricks that will help you, and I'd like to share some of them with you. Uh, I'm going to be painting a bumper cover now. It's going to be a base coat, clear coat, uh, base coat yellow with a clear coat on top, and a sealer coat. Uh, and I'm going to go through those steps. And as I go along, I'm going to just tell you some tips. What to do, what not to do. Some mistakes that I've made, and I occasionally still make, and I'll tell you, every time I make that mistake, I said, I'll never make that mistake again. But guess what? I make the mistake again, and it happens. Uh, there's nothing more, I, I don't know, I love to paint. I love to paint cars, I love to paint anything. And it, it's very relaxing to me, and I, and I love it. And there's something great about going around a car, shooting on the color, coming back, shooting on three, four coats of clear, not having a single run, not having a single sag. It's all done. You pull off the tape, pull off the masking tape, rub it out with some 2,000 grit sandpaper, polish it, it looks like a million dollars. I don't know, there's just something really rewarding about that. So, let's go through through this painting process. I'll give you the tips and tricks. We'll talk at the end. And uh, if you have any advice, if you paint, and you do this all the time, I know some of you guys out there paint all the time, every day, all day long. Share your tips and tricks with us and help us to get better. So let's get back to, let's get into some painting. This is a plastic bumper cover. It goes on the uh, entire front end of the vehicle. And when you buy them, one quick tip, don't buy the cheapest one because what happens is they do make different grades. The cheaper ones are usually blemishes and when you go to put it together it's not going to fit right. So spend a little extra money. A good front bumper cover is going to be in the two, three hundred dollar range. You can get a cheap one for a hundred and fifty bucks or so but I'll tell you it's not going to fit right. So put the money and get the good one right up front. Spend the two hundred fifty bucks and you'll be a lot happier. Now it should come already primed. This is primed and ready for paint is what they say. However, you got to do a few things first. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rough up the entire surface uh, of, this, of this bumper cover with a scotch bright pad. I want to take the shine off and I'm going to make sure it has an even, even sort of gloss or dullness if you will. And I'm also going to pay attention to look for any nibs or, or nubs where there might be some imperfections in the primer. First thing uh, rough up the entire surface of your cover, whether it's a fender, whatever part it is, rough it up with a scotch Brite pad. Now after you've gone over the entire surface with a scotch Brite pad, you want to clean the surface. And I'm going to do that, I'm just going to use a paper towel and a, a urethane reducer. You want to use something that's not going to be a solvent like lacquer thinner because these, are, these, these do have primer on it 
and you don't want to obviously activate or dissolve the primer underneath. You're going to get off a lot of the stuff that you sanded. So now I'm just going to go over it real quick with this, uh, re this uh, reducer and I'm going to do it quickly so it doesn't melt. Now at this point you have the surface sanded roughly with the scotch bright and you have it cleaned of all the residue with a, uh, a reducer just to get the surface clean. At this point you don't want to touch it you want it completely grease free so if you took your hand and put it on there you could end up with a handprint in your paint. So you take, get, it, get yourself a, a, a real nice tack cloth and very slowly go over the entire surface with a tack cloth and as you do that if you go slow enough you don't want to go too slow because you don't want it to stick but as you do that you'll be able to feel the surface and this is your last chance to feel the surface for any little uh, nubs in the primer or uh, for flashing from the molding process and obviously you want to keep it dry and now you're at the point where you want to start minimizing dust and you can do that by a couple things number one making sure that you're, you shake out your clothes and make sure you don't have dust all over you and secondly I keep the floor damp so that um, so that you don't kick up any dust off the floor so take your time go over the entire part with a nice tack cloth to make sure it's perfectly clean and, and uh, dust free now that you have your surface ready to paint a couple things about materials. The first thing I want to do before I paint the part is to seal it. And I'm going to be using this, uh, it's a Nason sealer, it's actually made by DuPont. It's equivalent to the DuPont Chroma series uh, and it's a, just a little, uh, in a little more inexpensive. And this is a sealer that's mixed in a can, ready to roll. It's out of the can, mixed, ready to paint, ready to shoot, right out of the can. It's a 422-23. This is a uh, acrylic sealer. And this is a gray. I'm using a gray. I'm painting yellow. Wait you see this yellow. I know it's not the greatest, but that's what, what it takes. So you want to seal the surface because uh, I'm using a base coat clear coat system. And the base coat has a solvent in it. And depending on what you use, and depending how the part comes from the manufacturer, the paint itself, the solvents in the paint, can dissolve the primer that's on the part and if that happens you are not going to be happy it'll be crow's foot checking peeling it'll be a complete mess and you'll have to wait for it all to dry sand it all down and try again so to avoid that problem you take a sealer and you put a sealer on now this isn't a, you're not painting you're, well you are painting it but it, it's it's more of a light coat seal coat and this chemically is a chemical barrier barrier between your paint, the base coat, clear coat, and the primer underneath. So you're putting a sealer on to protect it from the, uh, the, the chemicals or the solvents in the paint. So I'm going to put one coat of the sealer on the part and let it cure com completely. It's an air dry thing. It's not a mix. You don't have to put a hardener in it, but it doesn't take that long. It's pretty cold today. It's only 20 degrees outside. It's probably, let's see what temperature, it's about 60, 65 degrees in the booth where I'm painting. So it's going to take a little while to dry, but you've got to let it dry completely, and it's completely worth it. So make sure you put a sealer on before you put your paint on. Base coat, clear coat, whatever you're going to put on, always seal it first. And let me show you a little couple tips about mixing paint and getting it ready. Okay, a couple things about paints, and if you buy a reputable paint from a good paint store, a good automotive supply store, it's going to, there's a lot of information on the side. And it's going to tell you uh, some good information. So, all, like I always say in all my videos, regardless, always follow the manufacturer's recommendations. They're going to tell you how to mix it. They're going to tell you how to apply it. Uh, they're going to tell you how many coats to apply it. They're going to tell you evaporation time, how long to let it sit. They're going to tell you all kinds of things about putting it on and then what size tip to use, even what size tip application. So, this is one coat. It's a one coat sealer. So, read the, read the recommendations on the can. Uh, if you don't, if never done it before, and it'll tell you what to use. Now you can buy. I always use. I use this uh, the Vilbus starting line uh, spray gun for a lot of things, and it's excellent. You can buy them uh, at. Uh, geez, Eastwood sells them in a kit for 180 or 200 bucks, and they're phenomenal. You get a couple different sizes, and they're great. So get yourself a good spray gun, and if you buy your paints and your materials from a reputable automotive finish supply store they'll give you a couple things they will, should be able to supply you with a paint cup 
And these are excellent because it tells you how to mix the paint. It gives you different ratios, one to one, two to one, three to one, four to one, if you're gonna put a reducer in it. And I buy, buy stuff from Auto Finishers in, in Buffalo. They have a store in Rochester. But they'll be able to give you cups and they should also be able to give you strainers. So you wanna get strainers when you get your materials. Just ask the guy, hey, can I get some strainers and some cups? And he should be able to give you a strainer and some cups so you can mix your material. But always, always, always put a strainer in your paint cup to make sure you're going to strain the paint as it goes in the gun. You don't want to have anything get in that gun. So I'm going to, str I'm going to strain the paint. Uh, since like I said before this, this sealer is, is ready to spray right out of the can, I'm just going to open it up. I've already mixed it up. And it is a good practice. Let me grab a stick here to take a paint stick and make sure there aren't no lumps on the bottom. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And this is, this is awesome. It feels fantastic. It's ready to use. Ready to use right out of the can. So I'm going to put, the, put this off to the side a little bit. And I'm just going to pour it straight right into, right into the strainer, right into my gun. And since I don't have to mix it with anything, I can put a lot of it in here. And whatever I don't use, I can put right back in the can. So strain it. Wait for it to drip. And then put the cover right on your spray gun so you don't get any dust in there. Now I'm going to go paint. Now before you paint, make sure your gun is ready. Check your air. Check your spray pattern. Make sure you have the right airflow. Adjust your gun accordingly. And take a quick look around the area. Make sure you're not going to trip on anything. And make sure you're not going to hit your part so that you don't actually hit it and it falls off. Again, you'll screw it all up. And most importantly, always, always, always wear a respirator. Protect your lungs, protect your skin, protect yourself. And when you spray, I'm going to use long sweeping strokes like this. And I'm going to put my respirator on and give it a shot. Now, I'm not going to put this on super thick. It's going to be one medium wet coat and it's going to flow nice and it'll sit and I'll leave it. And there we go. One single wet coat across the entire surface is all you need. And since this is a solvent based, it has to air dry. So when it's dry, it'll be nice and dull. That's how I know it's dry. And then we'll go over mixing paint, applying the base coat, and then the clear coat. Now, here's another little tip for you. Your sealer should be dry. And you can see it's dry because it's a dull finish. And if you're not sure if it's dry, let it dry for another half an hour. Because the worst thing you could do is rush it. Painting is 1% technique and 99% patience. So, have patience, let it dry. Walk away, go have something to eat, take a nap, go do laundry, jump the old lady, whatever you gotta do, but let it dry. Have the patience to let it dry, most important. And the next thing, although it looks dry and you think it's dry, you're gonna wanna touch it to see if it's dry. Don't do it, don't touch it, leave it alone. Don't take a chance of putting a fingerprint on there. Don't take a chance of putting any oil on there. Don't get a chance of putting any dust on there. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Just like your mother said when you are little. Don't touch it. You're going to grow hair on your palms and you're going to go blind. Leave it alone. Don't touch it, okay? Now, the surface is dry. I'm sure it's dry. So I'm going to put my base coat on. And you can look at the surface and if you see any small hairs or any small imperfections, now is the time to fix it. Be very, very careful. Touch it the least amount possible. A pair of tweezers, something very small, very light, maybe 400 grit sandpaper to get a little nub off, but be very, very careful. Don't be aggressive. The surface is perfectly clean. You just sprayed on a nice coat of sealer and you want it to sit just as it dried, okay? So, let's go mix up some paint. We'll lay down the color, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll give you a couple tips about mixing paint. Okay, now, mixing paint. There are a couple ways to do it. As I said, you can get a mixing cup 
from your paint supply store and they're very reliable. You just read it, fill it up to the levels and it's all mixed. Uh, if, you, if you're mixing a little bit of paint it makes it difficult. You deal with the meniscus on the side of the cup and it kind of makes it difficult to uh, measure accurately. So what I do is I measure every all my paints by weight. Whenever I mix a paint, I do it by weight to make sure I'm doing it accurately. Uh, the gram scale is a lot more accurate than just kind of sighting on the side of a piece of plastic and I like to be a little more precise. So, you can get one of these scales at Harbor Freight. They're cheap. I, I think it was like maybe 15 bucks. I don't remember. I bought it a long time ago and I use it a lot. But it's great. Maybe some kid in your neighborhood's got a gram scale you can borrow. <laughs> Especially if you're in Colorado. Who knows? But the point is, the scale is going to be a little more accurate than just looking at the side. That's why I use it. So I just had the paint mixed up this morning, so I know it's thoroughly mixed. They, they mixed it for me this morning, so I'm going to put it by weight. It's one to one. So I'm quite simply going to pour in, and I want to make sure I mix, mix enough to do the whole job. So I'm going to put in, okay, I'm going to mix this up to, let's say, 200 grams. Okay, went over a little bit. That's 204, 205 grams of color. Looks like, whoops. Kind of looks like egg yolk, doesn't it? You should see the car. Anyway, so I got my base coat in and I just touch it to make sure that it settles. It settled at 205 grams, so I'll go up to 410 with my with my base maker. This is a one-to-one -one mixture. Get close and go right to 408, 409, 410. Now, when you buy your base maker or your reducer, whatever you're doing, there's low temp, mid temp, high temp. I use a medium reducer uh, usually all the time unless it's really hot outside because you can control it better uh, and you can control it. Now, you can put a little bit more reducer in if you want to speed it up. You can put a little less if you want a slow dry time. That's all based on experience. Uh, so you can do it the way you want. So get your number, get it mixed accurately, and then use a clean stick or the clean end of your stick and mix it thoroughly. And once you mix it thoroughly, pour it in your cup and you're ready to go. And don't forget, always, always, always use a strainer when you're pouring it in your cup, when the paint cup. Now I'm ready to apply the color. Same thing. Adjust my spray, looks alright, my air pressure is set right on my gun. Long sweeping motions. Again, I lay my color down. What was that? I have no idea. Make sure it's dust free. And this is your last chance. Another tip. Before you put down the paint, just pull the air. Just spray, spray some air across the part. Any dust that's laying there will blow right off. Again, my floor is a little damp to make sure. Long sweeping strokes, and again, always, always, always use your respirator. Now, as you can see, I have the color on, and it took uh, several coats of color in order to get it to be uh, covered properly. So, uh, you have to make sure you have even coverage, and if you notice that the surface is kind of dull, it's not shiny. The base coat is clear. Uh, I'm sorry, the base coat is completely dry. And now I can put some clear on. So let me go mix up some clear and we'll talk about uh, the tricks uh, and what you need to do to uh, put clear on and be successful. Now, just like the, the paint, clear is mixed uh, similarly. This clear is mixed four to one. So uh, here's some advice for you. If you're going to mix clear, only mix the amount you're going to use to put on your first light coat. Don't mix more than you need because you can come back and mix more. You want to let it set. You want to let it cure, uh, cure. Not necessarily cure, but you want to let it tack up in between coats so it doesn't run. This is where you're going to get into the coats where it will run. And the last thing you want to do is have your clear run. And uh, this is uh, mix four to one. So I'm going to mix it the same way. Similar to the uh, paint. Sorry, I have my arm in the way there. Uh, Okay, four to one. Now I'll mix that up thoroughly and then we'll go in and paint. This is the Select Clear uh, by Nason. Uh, it, it's, it's adequate for what I'm doing right now, so I don't need a high, I don't need to use something that's $500 a gallon. This, this stuff is a 150, it's like $175 a gallon and it does just fine. Let me mix that up, we'll go shoot some clear. Alright, some tips about clear. 
clear is very sensitive to heat and humidity. Right now I'm spraying and it's probably about 40, I'm going to say it's 40, 45 degrees in here. So this is very, very cool. Which means the clear is going to cure slower, which means it has a greater chance to run. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to put my clear on very, very thin. A lot of thin coats, letting it tack up in between. And that will stop it from running. Now I'm going to, do, I'm going to cut in all of my parts before I spray the entire part. And cutting in is just simply going really slow with a point and getting in here, getting some clear where I need to get it so that I don't have to focus the gun here and, and get a ton of clear on there and it's going to run for sure. So I'm going to cut in all of my little spots very carefully, take my time. Then I'll put a coat over the top of that. And, and I'll put one coat on and show you what it should look like when you get your first coat on. I haven't perfected the having the camera here while I'm painting technique yet, and I'm working on that, but I will show you what your first coat should look like. So let me do some clearing. And again, don't touch it. I just put this, this base coat on. It's, it's cured. It's all flashed up. It's nice and flat. It's ready to accept the clear. And I'm going I'm to go right over it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to tack cloth it. All I'm going to do is come over with some air with my gun just before I shoot. And then I'll lay some clear on there very, very slow and very, very smooth. It's going to take a while. Even though this is a bumper cover, I'll probably spend 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes putting on uh, the first coat of clear to make sure it's on right. Now there we go. One very light coat. I just about sprayed it on there. And since it's so cold in here, and just so you know, I can show you how cold it is. You can see my breath. It's cold in here. So you put it on and it's going to flow. So spray it light. Don't spray it heavy. Less is better when you're spraying clear. So go light with the clear and then let it set. Now, I'm going to take this into the shop area where it's warmer. I'm going to let this warm up and wait till it tacks up. Then I'll put another coat on there and I'll show you how to test. Give it the tack test when you know you're ready for the next coat. Okay, I hope you're ready for this highly technical tack test to tell when you're ready for the second coat of clear. Are you ready? This is really technical, so pay attention because you don't want to you don't want to screw this up. Now you take a part that you just painted in an area like here's a tab where it's going to be mounted. A bolt's going to go through there, so I'm not really worried about if I put a mark on there. So I'm going to touch this if I touch it and it's still wet, it's got to dry more. If I touch it and it either pulls off a little bit of material or I leave a fingerprint, it's perfect. So let's give, this is our highly, highly technical tack test. Ready? Here we go. Go. Ready? Okay, my finger, I left a fingerprint. See the fingerprint? Perfect. Ready for the second coat. That's our highly technical tack test. Now here is the finished part. There is, believe it or not, nine coats of yellow to get the yellow even on this part and I have just over about two and a half coats of clear to get it to be nice and shiny. You can see the shine is gorgeous. That Nason clear even though it's inexpensive and it's considered to be a generic product it, it sprays like a million dollars. It really does. You don't need to have fancy spray booths and you don't need to have uh, thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment to get professional results and I've, I've done it just like that. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's painting and that's how you put the clear on. That's what it looks like when you're done with the clear. So there you have it guys, painting tips and tricks. I know it seems simple, but I'll tell you, as you go through the painting process, if you take your time, follow the process, and be patient, you'll be successful every time, okay? Just take your time, follow the process, follow the instructions on the can, to follow what the manufacturer says, and practice. Practice, practice, practice. If you get a gun, get some paint, and just practice spraying something with it. Just spray, I don't know, spray some cardboard, spray a piece of plastic, whatever. Just practice. Get the hang of spraying with the gun, and you'll be very, very successful. You don't need a million dollar spray booth and five thousand dollars worth of spray guns in order to get professional results. Uh, thank you very much for your text messages and your comments. If there's anything you'd like to see, please let me know, and I'll make a video for you, and I'll do the best I can. Like I said, I don't know everything, but I can certainly gather the information and pre present it to everyone so that we can all understand and hopefully we can uh, help each other along and we can all enjoy this a little more. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.